Okay, so before we do our big bore boring case bore, I'm going to have to do some prep work. So I got my stud puller here. It's a snap on stud puller. You can also use two nuts. Use vice grips on the stud, which is really not good. Multiple ways of doing this stuff. Just give it a little bit of tightening. It has a um, collet on here. It pinches down on the stud and allows you to pull it out. See the collet there. So you pike it free, you just go like that. It pops the collet free and you pull the stud out. There you go, quick and simple. Just gotta do that multiple times. Gotta be careful about over torquing the threads in the case, you can strip them, so that's why I hold it when I do it. Of a repetitive job here, see. Those are out. We'll be back though. We gotta do those again. We got four more to do. Okay, now I gotta clean off these surfaces here. So I got my carbide scraper here, which will remove powder. I'll also remove aluminum if you're not too careful. That was all taped off, but oh well. Now you take a fine file. See there's nothing sticking up. Not trying to move metal, you're just trying to knock off any high spots. Titty's sticking up. Okay, that takes care of that part. So now it's nice and clean. You can see where you scraped off the gasket. You can't feel anything where you damage your case, even though you probably did take a little bit off. This side over here is for the tranny goes on it. So this should be cleaned up too, but I'll let them worry about that. That's their job. Now I gotta clean up this surface here. So Harley uses a, a silicon type material for case sealing. Cases are very, very rough. Looks like they have rocks stuck between them when they tighten them down.
probably from being sandblasted or something. You can see how rough it is through here. It's really rough. You can hear it when this goes across. See the difference how smooth that is? How rough that is? It's bad. So now you take your file again, knock off whatever's there, smooth things up a little bit. Still been, they've been clean, they still got grit and junk still coming out of all this, wherever. Okay, so this half here is ready to be bored. The gasket surface here needs to be dealt with. I'm going to let them deal with it because I don't want to deal with it. I don't get paid to deal with that crap. Let them deal with it. They don't want to powder coat it. So, see, I don't like doing it either. Okay, so I can get the other side over here. We'll go get the other one. So now we get to do this side. Oh, this one I need the tap on there. I didn't do the tap. Oh well, I gotta pull these dowels out. We're gonna transfer over to the other side. Take my scraper with me. We'll go over here and work. We should be working over here anyway. This is a dirty area. That's the assembly area over there. Assembly area we want clean. Dirty area we don't care about. Within reason. There's that. Damage that cutter. Get this out of the way. Okay, so the way to get dowels is, the easiest way is to go over here and grab a nice 5 16 coarse tap with a blunt edge on it. So that'd be called a bottoming tap. See, this one's uh, tapered in. This one here is not quite so tapered. We don't want it to cut any threads into it. We just want it removed apart. So get a tap driver. Well, there's no T handle. So we're trying to do is get the bushing to come out. So the way you do that is you go ahead and start threading this in and the bushing will start spinning in the case. So you have to push in fairly hard to get it to start. And a, little bit of, a little bit off the of center actually helps jam it in better, but I still try to get them relatively close. So now you just keep turning them in until the bushing turns. This one does not want to come off. There it goes. Now the bushing is turning in the case, and you're pulling up on the T handle as you're doing it. These things are in there good. That one's in there pretty tight. See how far I tapped into it? So now it's out. You see how I'm at a little bit of an angle? So that makes it dig in pretty good. That's why you're sacrificing these. So now you take a pair of vice grips, a pair of pliers. If you have a pair of pliers with a rounded end, it helps. This one's probably not going to want to come out very easy. Nope. See, it's just spinning. So we're going to go up with the vise, holding the vise over here. Get out of the vise. That didn't work, we can use a chuck jaw on the bottom on the lathe. There it goes. Didn't want to come off, but there you go. So there you go. So now this is a sacrificial part. You could reuse it, but it'd be best to just put a new one in it. 
So that's up to the customer. <laughs> yeah, probably a couple dollar part, no big deal. And this one you do the same thing. These ones are in there pretty good also. This one just keeps cutting deeper. It's not spinning yet. There it goes. That was a tap break and that was a part freeing up. So this stuff's all corroded from sitting outside, so everything's stuck in there pretty good. Yeah, another real tight one. So we're gonna use the vise again. Just keep going back and forth on the vise, and eventually it finally pops and then it comes off. Like I said, if I use a drill chuck, or I mean a delay chuck, it'll hold more evenly. It's easier to do, but you can do it with the vise. You can also do it with vise grips. So. They all work. Okay, after you're all done, you put the tap back. Now, if I had the taper tap I was using, it would just throw all the way through. That wouldn't really help you very well. But if you did do all the way through, you can put a bolt in it and then uh, come out that way. It would be best if you stop before you went all the way through. You can put a bolt in the thread that you got going and just spin the bolt head and eventually the dowel. At some point, the dowel pin will spin. If you go all the way through the dowel pin, you got to use a puller to pull it. You run the bolt all the way down, then you can pull it out, weld a slide hammer to it and yank it out that way. So it's best to stop before you get to that point. Because once the dowel pin starts to spin, you can get it to come out. Okay, so this surface now is uh, ready to be uh, cleaned up now. So once again, we'll take the uh, scraper and knock off all the powder coat here. I don't know if you can see it, but the edge is sticking up a little bit. And it's cutting it as we're going down across the surface here. See all the purple stuff coming off? Powder coat just makes everything to be a pain in the ass when you gotta deal with it. Come on, the camera didn't want to work. Blow it up and see a little bit better what's going on. See the powder coat's flaking off right here. Powder coat's being a pain. See, when the powder coat's real thick, it's hard to feel it and cut it. You're trying to try not to cut the aluminum, but it's really hard. So the carbide will cut the aluminum. You gotta be careful. Try different angles. Move things around a little bit. So you don't have to get it all well all off of the scraper, you can use a file also. Okay, got most of it off. We come up with our real nice, dull, fine file. And just smooth it all up. Slip it right here in this corner. Hit it from multiple directions and it knocks it down. <clears throat> and 
since I'm spreading my load out all over the place, I'm not just pushing in one spot. I'm not going like this with a file. Even though the file holds flat, just using my fingers and holding it down flat. So if you want to keep it flat, you don't want to make it uneven. <clears throat> Nothing else is coming up off that surface. So there you go. Ooh, this bearing's broken. Nice. You want to know if your bearings are bad? When you see broken chunks, that's bad. I've never seen one broken out like that. Something obviously uh, big time happened to this motor. It's, it came apart pretty heavy. It's got some issues. Those are issues. A little repair work might be required. There's a lot of stuff happening here. I'm not sure what all this is. It looks like I got a lot of shrapnel running around inside of here. It's not just corrosion. So my guess is it had some serious piston issues in this motor. Okay, this gray steeler here is Harley sealer right here. It's like silicone. See, it doesn't break up too well. See how it just all rolls up and doesn't really want to break. That's bad because I guess in, in the motor won't come out. The three bond sealer, when you do this stuff, it breaks up, crumbles, and goes away. Silicone does it. I don't like silicone. It does a good job of sealing, but I don't want this crap running around inside my motor. So it's just like a big rubber band. It's too strong, it doesn't break up. I don't care if manufacturers do like it. It's junk in my opinion. That's why I don't use it. Better stuff to use out there. This is a big piece of powder coat over here. Have to deal with it. So it looks like they powder coated right over the silicone to me. But I want to rub this into the dowel pin, it'll break my cutter, so gotta make sure I push it away from where I want to be. There we go. I'm gonna take a file and knock off the burrs are over here. Here the high spots there. When you push a file down, it won't move, won't move. There's a high spot under it, so it won't move. When the surface is flat, it'll rotate, it'll uh, slide pretty easy, see. One here's got a lot of silicone around the hole there I'm dealing with. All right, so that should be halfway decent. Okay, so that should be good. We can go back and pull the studs. All right, we'll be back in a minute. 